Hi everyone, good evening and welcome back to session 5 of clearly, truly, undisputably what's the world's most powerful vocabulary training indeed. Right, just before we go ahead with the session, a quick recap of what we do at Aptitude. So essentially we are uh, the leading experts in mentoring and coaching for law exams like CLAT, LSAT and ILIT and for B-School entrance exams such as IPM, IIM, Indoor, Rotak, uh, their integrated program in management and for the others as well. We offer sessions as part of these you know, YouTube live sessions as well as long term online courses and we have probably one of the best, robust and most accurate test series out there in the market for these two kind of exams. With that short introduction about what we do, let's quickly get on with today's work. Right. So we'll follow the same old approach, the same good solid approach that we've been using for the last four sessions and the response to those four sessions has been really amazing. So to continue with the good work, the first word we start with today is adjunct. Now adjunct has got two roots. The first one is something called as junk, which is the second part of the word, which means to join. And the first one is called add. Wow. This is not a simple add, there are so many small, 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 small words which have been clubbed together into one root. The reason I've done that is because this root add, which means to word, actually changes depending upon the consonant of the word it has been joined to. And it takes on add can become AC, AC, AF, AF, AG, AG, ALL. Al, depending upon what's the consonant of the next word, next word it is being joined to. How do you recognize this? Words which have add, meaning to word as a root or as a prefix, there you will see a repetition of the letter coming after A. For example, accumulate, assimilate, A C C U M U L A T E, A S S I M I L A T E. So you see the repetition of the first letter after A. That's a hint, that's a clue that the root here is add, which means toward. Now let's see where this takes us. So the way today's session will flow is that we have this one big mothership of a root, the core root, which is add, which means toward. And we'll build some bachu bachu, you know, kid or children roots around it. Today we have a total of 10 children roots. 10 child roots and you join this mothership root which is add take the child root join them you get one word and from there we'll expand the word list and like that we'll end up doing 52 words today using simply roots but it won't feel like 52 i promise you that and at the end of the session you'll remember all 52 words i promise you that as well now look coming back to our word adjunct which means add to word joining so adjunct means toward joining, towards a joint. So that's what actually adjunct means. It is something which has been joined or added on to another main piece. That's called an adjunct, right? Now let us look at what other words we get from junct. Enjoin. Enjoin is when you have been ordered or mandated by the law or by the court or by any other authority to do something or not to do something both kinds of instructions given to you to do it or forbidding you from doing it if it comes from a place of authority like a court then it's called then it is said that you have been enjoined by the court you have been enjoined by the king to do this or not to do this which means this authority or this word that is coming to you comes joined with a lot of authority. That's why you're being enjoined to do something or not to do something. Juncture. Okay, juncture uh, actually means a critical point in time or a critical point in a series, in a situation. For example, at this juncture, Dhoni needs to take a call whether he will continue to play all international cricket or will just focus upon the IPL at this juncture, at this point of time. 
So actually it's like there are two or three things joined together at that point of time and you have to take a call on which route you need to take. That decision making point in time is called juncture. A more common word that we, all of you would have heard, at least those of you would definitely have heard who travel by train, something called as a junction. A junction or a train junction specifically is a train station where different lines, train lines from different parts of the country meet. This is where people change trains to take another train or to, to go on another route of travel. Such a point is called a train junction, even used without the context of trains. Junction actually means a meeting point of several thoughts several people, several roads, several ideologies, all of these are called a junction. Injunction, it is exactly the same as the first word enjoin. It is an order by the court to do something or not to do something, just a variant of the same word. Enjoin is a verb, injunction is a noun, that's the key difference. Otherwise both of them mean the same thing. Right. Moving on, so that's a lot, you know, four words that we got from one simple root. Let us continue this journey. If you add Levis, which means flight, I don't think the guy who founded Levi's jeans had this root in his mind. This Levi's or this Levis means light in the sense something that is not heavy, something that raises from the ground. It's not the light as in the, you know, uh, Roshni wala light, tube light wala light. It's not that light. It's the not heavy, halka wala light. So if you take this and you take add, now remember what I said, that when you join it with other words, the first consonant gets repeated. So you get a word called alleviate. See the double L? That's a hint. That's a clue. That's a giveaway. That the first word here or the first root here is add, which means toward. Levis means light. So towards lightness. Actually, alleviate means to lighten the burden of someone, to lighten the pain of someone, to reduce the misery of someone, to reduce the suffering of something. So anything that alleviates a situation makes it a little better. To alleviate is to make a bad situation better. Then you take Levis and you work at a word called levity, which means lightness, which means lack of seriousness. So actually, levity is not such a positive word when you want somebody to be serious about a situation. See, he addressed the press conference with such levity. I still remember, I think you guys can still find the video on YouTube as well, when Congress lost the elections, last Lok Sabha elections, and Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi were there giving the post, you know, after the results came out, they were giving the uh, press conference. Sonia Gandhi was speaking very, very seriously. She was like, you know, this is a clear mandate. The people have rejected us. We need to figure out how we need to change as a party and how we become more meaningful, etc., etc. And Rahul Gandhi, standing by her side, was literally giggling. And people were shocked. He was like, how can this guy act with such levity in a serious press conference? So that's levity when somebody is not serious. Somebody is being very light-hearted about a serious event. Levy. Levy actually means to charge something. Okay, You levy a fees. You levy a penalty. Now how is it connected to levies which means to make it light? God only knows. But one thing that comes to mind is they have made your pockets lighter. The government by levying a fees or levying a road toll charges has made your pocket lighter by that much money. So levy also comes from this root, which is to mean light. A variant spelling of levy, but pronounced the same way. Such words are called homophones. Homo means same or similar and P-H-O-N-O, phono means sound. So homophones are English words that sound similar, but are written differently and mean different things. One of those examples are these two words, levy and levy. The other levy is an embankment you create or you build to hold back water from, from flooding into the you know low-lying crop or low-lying area. Such embankments to restrict water or to hold back water are called levy. Now again, the how Levi's light became levy is a bit unclear. 
the word has gone through many iterations in its meaning but it also comes from the same root the next liver this is a word we all know you know it's the liver you put and you so and you, you take a fulcrum you take a pivot you put a rod on it and you may create a fulcrum and if you press it down here this entire apparatus is called a lever okay so a lever is anything that you can use to move things as if they were light enough to move them so that's a lever which is a mechanical term but we get a word from it which is very powerful in everyday usage a word called leverage leverage means having the power to influence a situation or to influence a person what leverage does he have over the terrorists i wonder because they seem to agree to everything he says is he giving them money is he giving them ammunition what leverage what power does he have which allows him to control these terrorists similarly if you get into a negotiation you must first think okay you want this thing from the other party but what leverage do you have to demand that what power do you have what influence do you have that's called leverage which comes from the word lever which comes from the word levis which means to say make something light or to move something as if it were very light right that's the levis journey now let's look at the one last root from levis and then we move on to the next child root so there is a word called levitation now levis means light and this word beautifully captures that meaning levitation means to literally float in the air so if something is levitating you are floating in the air so there is a there is an institute that teaches transcendental meditation it is supposed to be a different kind of meditation and they claim that people who practice their meditation regularly are actually able to levitate that you are meditating and then you rise up in the air now it's difficult to say whether they make that statement in levity or in all seriousness but levitation means to rise up to float up in air good let's take a rich hall from one child root which is levis we started with alleviate which means to make something lighter to lessen the burden of somebody's misery or lessen somebody's suffering to lessen the pain of something that is called to alleviate and then that gives levity levi levi lever leverage and finally levitation good moving on the next root we have is cdr again like we have said in the earlier class as well ignore the ere part it is used only to make verbs in latin so what really matters to us is cede seed which means to go just to go now let us add add to it and obviously you can guess by now the first word will be a double c e d note the repetition of the first letter which is a hint that the first root is add it means towards so accede by the roots would mean to go towards something or to go towards someone accede actually means that you accede to somebody's request which means you accept somebody's request you give in to their request that is called to accede to somebody's demands or to accede to somebody's request you go towards them you give in to their demands or their request that's called accede if you remove everything and just look at the simple word seed seed has a slightly submissive meaning it means to yield to give away because you didn't have power to hold on to it accede doesn't have that connotation you accede to somebody's request because you had the power to either accept or reject that request but when you seed something you are giving away because it has been taken away from you you had to give in you had to yield to that so people in a war seed territory which means they let go of territory because the enemy has taken it over sometimes you seed power to the next best guy which means you have given up power to him so to seed means to yield or to give up or to give away to let it go that is seed there's a word called reseed now we'll see a lot of interesting prefixes throughout the session today i will give you a list of them at the end of it and these give you know use the same root you keep changing the prefix you get 
keep you keep getting different meanings but if you know the prefixes you can guess all the meanings so re r e re it means again such as repeat or back such as retake or rewind right recede would mean to go back and that's exactly what it means so you know when a flood hits a state and after a while the water start going back into the sea we say the waters are receding people like me at my age you know when we were young our hairline would start somewhere here and slowly it keeps on moving back and back and back the way to describe it is receding hairlines which means our hairlines are going back and back and back a very nice way of saying that we are actually going bald that is to recede secede we saw this prefix in an earlier session as well remember sedition which is to try and break away to journey away which is a traitorous thing against a country to break the country apart se means to separate or away so to secede would mean to go away and that is exactly what it means a splitting up a going away so the dominion seceded from the mother nation which means it separated Pakistan a long time back seceded from India right so secede means to separate out to go apart concede remember con it, this prefix has been there with us right from the first session con com co all of these things mean together or with so to concede means to go together or to go with to go with what to go with what you tell me to so when you concede a point or when i concede a point to you i agree to your point so i decide to go with your point so you concede points you concede an argument saying that okay i have lost this argument i'll go with you or you have won the argument in fact again going back to the elections example people don't wait till the final final results are out before congratulating the opposition party when the poll counting just starts everybody is gung ho everybody is very you know upbeat my party is going to win my party is going to win but half way through the counting or 70% through the counting they realize what's happening and then they start holding these press conferences and they say we concede defeat so to concede defeat in a in an election is to accept defeat before the final result is out that kind of an acceptance of defeat before the final results are in is to concede defeat right so you concede defeat and you concede an argument or you concede a point where you say okay you are right i give in to your point i go with your point that's also to be concede another interesting word with a very common prefix called intercede inter means between okay so to go between is what this word means to intercede is actually to take an action or make a request or petition in a court on behalf of somebody so she interceded on the behalf of the displaced masses due to the new dam that has been built which means she put up a complaint in the court on behalf of all these guys who were displaced by the building of the new dam so when you take an action on behalf of somebody when you speak on behalf of somebody when you file a complaint on behalf of somebody you are interceding you are going in between them and the person they should be requesting or talking to that is called to intercede right couple of interesting words which take us on a slightly more you know, which take us towards a few more interesting roots antecedent this anti doesn't mean opposite that is a n t i anti right anti national element right antipathy if you remember we did this in the last class antecedent is before this a n t e anti means before a very common word that is built from anti is anterior so you have creatures have an anterior part and a posterior part the anterior part is the part that has to do with the face and you know this half and posterior is what comes the second half in the later half right so anti is before antecedent is what has gone before so what has come earlier an earlier stage is called antecedent right 
precedent pre also means before but this slight sort of from a root point of view both words mean the same thing antecedent is what has happened before precedent is also what has happened before but in usage there is a difference when we say something is a precedent it actually means the full meaning is this has happened before and therefore it can be used an example or as a rule or as a guideline to how things have to happen henceforth or after that i'll give you an example so this is used a lot in law and in court okay one of the principles of law is the rule of precedent which means if a particular case if a particular law has been interpreted in a certain way in an earlier case whenever such a case comes up again in any other court of law they have to look back and see how this decision was made and use that as a guideline this is to make sure that the same law is interpreted consistently over a period of time by various various courts so the in the law they say is there a precedent for this has it been done like this before has it gone like this before and therefore we can use it as a guideline so precedent is used okay has two parts to its meaning one it has happened like this in the past and second part therefore it can be used as a guideline in the future right antecedent has no such future connotations it simply means what has gone before understood good now we take anti and we get to an interesting word we club it with a root called diluvium flood you can probably remember this root by a simple stupid mnemonic diluba diluba in a flood diluva in a flood you take anti you take diluvium you put them together you get a word called anti diluvian which literally means before the flood and the flood being referred to in this word is the flood that came at the beginning of creation the biblical flood that washed everything away and noah had to build an ark and take one pair of each kind of animal to sustain creation once the flood waters receded once they went down when they went back so anti diluvian actually refers to the time in the bible before the big flood happened in everyday language you would use anti diluvian for anything that is very ancient very historic very old and hence probably outdated such kind of a thing would be called anti diluvian for example if you expect that after marriage your wife will just take care of home respect you as patidev and you know will not have any ambitions or aspirations of her own my dear friend you have anti diluvian notions about the role of women in society another common word that comes from the same root diluvium deluge which is just another word for a flood the root there is diluvium which actually means a flood clear good fantastic we have finished three child roots so far jung which means join which gives you the word enjoin when you have been told by the court or by an authority to do something or not to do something juncture a point in time where a critical decision has to be made junction a meeting area of trains of roads could be anything injunction another word for enjoin enjoin is a verb injunction is a noun it's a formal order from a court of law asking you to do something or prohibiting you from doing something that was the first four words we got from the root jung then we went to levis which gave us alleviate to lighten the suffering or misery or the badness of any situation levity lack of seriousness complete lightness that is levity levy is when it's a fees or a penalty or a charge when your pockets are made lighter by the government levy an embankment that is built to hold back the rain waters from flooding the low lying field lever something which can be used to lift heavy loads as if they were quite light leverage is the influence that you carry in a negotiation or in any situation or over somebody what's your leverage that's how we ask that question levitation is simply being so light that you lift up in the air that was the second child root third child root cdr which means to go simple word seed when you give in when you yield because you didn't have the power to hold on to it you have to let it go accede is when you accept somebody's request or when you give in to somebody's request but then you have the power to say yes or no recede 
flood waters recede they go back secede a small part territory secedes from a bigger country it separates it goes away goes apart intercede when you go between somebody who is uh, in need of help and somebody who has the power to help when you become the go between be those two parties you become you are interceding on behalf of this party who has been who wants to request something of the people in power precedent something that has gone before and therefore is a guideline for how things should happen in the future you have set a precedent dhoni god bless him one of the best cricketers ever to have played the game one of the best human beings ever to have played the game dhoni has set a precedent in terms of how champion captains can be unemotional calm long term perspective not overtly aggressive not driven mad by the will to compete but somebody who retains that balance of perspective in every situation so he has set a precedent so this has gone before and this will be used as a guideline for the future of how humane and balanced captains can be in competitive sport antecedent something that has just happened before antecedent you club it with diluvium you get antediluvian which refers to before the time of the biblical flood which means very very old time very ancient and you take deluge from the same root diluvium which just means a flood three roots lot of words brilliant good show well done let's move forward fourth child root for today is actually a clubbing of three different roots which mean the same thing bat plod and plunge all of them mean to beat to beat something right now let us see how they form words when clubbed with add now clearly from okay we'll first start with the plod root and then we'll go to the plunge root and we come back to the bat root a plod is to beat again and beat toward right so when you're beating your hands looking towards somebody you're applauding you're clapping for them you're saying well done i beat my hands together facing toward you i i praise you that is to applaud which is the same root you find in the word applause which means all this clapping showing appreciation by clapping that is applause plaudits plaudits is an approval or again uh, um, okay approval is the right word for it or it is when somebody appreciates you he won a lot of plaudits from the critics for his excellent acting in the movie which means he won a lot of approval or praise or appreciation from the critics laudatory something that is praise a bill his laudatory performance in the field is being talked about in all the major newspapers which means his performance was so good we should applaud it right here the p is missing but the root is the same you beat your hands together to appreciate the guy implode incidentally words like explode also comes from same root plod explode means to beat outward right implode is something which explodes internally right for example okay this is a very weird example but let's say if somebody was to eat a bomb and the bomb implodes in their stomach so it doesn't blow out it blows and everything falls in actually implosions are used in a very specific instance i wonder if you guys have seen videos of buildings that are blown up by explosions deliberately have you seen how they blow up the building is standing like this they don't go boom falling all over the place buildings when they are deliberately exploded or set off with explosives they actually you know explode this way boom 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 the building collapses on itself it collapses inward that kind of an explosion is called an implosion inward that is to implode plausible so something which if you beat against will hold true so something which is plausible is something which is can be true can be believed you are not sure but it can be believed why did you come late for this class so i was you know walking on the road and suddenly one meteorite fell right in front of me and you know the car that was passing by he did not see the meteor and the car went into the khada so you know i had to literally pull the car out of the crater now this is an implausible excuse please 
which is our next word which means not believable i can't if i beat against the truth what you're saying it doesn't hold true so it is an implausible thing im here is negative and the im in implode was internal in and im they got three meanings inside or internal things like inside inherent internal all of them use in as inside the other meaning is negative incorrect improper immodest which means not correct not modest not proper and another word is to say is to emphasize the word that comes after this for example flammable something that will catch fire and if you see a tanker on which it is written in inflammable that means very very flammable it emphasizes the flammability it doesn't mean not flammable don't worry come and smoke a cigarette next to this tanker it doesn't mean that it means it's very very flammable don't even think of smoking a cigarette that might also lead to the stuff catching fire right then the next word we go to plan jeer which means to beat plaintive it actually means something which is very sad mournful sorrowful a very sad song is actually a plaintive song now how does this mean to beat it's like so whoever is singing is actually beating his chest and singing back in our day when we were kids i had, i don't think you guys would have even heard of these songs unfortunately i have not heard of these songs you guys listen to these days so i'll have to give an example from my time only so they were very sad some very sad songs so one song was like yara silly silly birha ki raat ka jalna yara silly silly very sad song very plaintive song very sad mournful as if the singer is beating his or her chest with the pain and then singing this similar word plaint plaint is a complaint it's when you have been hurt you have a grievance and you take it to court that grievance or that complaint is called plaint incidentally the word complaint is nothing but an extension of this again somebody who has been beaten and he wants to complain about that that's a plaint and somebody who makes the complaint in a court is called a plaintiff so plaintiff is a legal word okay if you complain to your mom you are not a plaintiff you are just a cry baby but if you complain about your mom in a court of law then you are a plaintiff but what happens after that at your home might be illegal right and this last word bat one simple word that we'll do with this is a word called abate here a is not from add that's why it is in the end here a is a negative a a lot of time a lot of words in front of which a comes actually means not this i'll give you a word but please don't take this seriously i used to joke with a colleague and please my friends this is you know this is not against any community or anything please take this in jest please take this in fun i don't mean any of these jokes seriously so he was a sadar and whenever whenever i would see him in the morning i would say to him sardar ko asardar ka namaskar so a uh, i was using as a negative prefix there so somebody who is not a sardar is asardar is effective so abate is a negative using a as a negative prefix so something that is abating is not beating so hard right now for example the violence in the city has abated after the curfew which means the violence in the city has become less after the curfew that's how you use abate in a sentence good we've done four five child roots so far and moving on pel pel means to move or to go when you do the words you will see a lot of words that you might recognize which have the root pel first we take add which means toward when you join it to pel it will become appel and you will have a word called appellation appellation is actually another word for a name sometimes a formal name is called an appellation right uh how does this link with move or go the guy goes by this name he moves when you call him by this word that's why it's called an appellation slightly i understand slightly stretched and you know slightly 
khichawa meaning but then that's how these roots sometimes work out to be simple words propel pro means in favor of so propel is to move in favor of so to propel is to go in a particular direction because you you are in favor of going in that direction another common word which the same roots propeller ships have propellers which move them forward repel re we did remember again or back or something that is repelling is sending it back is moving it back so if you know if your boyfriend is repulsive you would rather go away from him or go back from him that is repel they repelled the enemy advanced which means they pushed back the enemy advanced they made them go backward compel is which likely mean to go together or to go with compel means to force someone to do something he was compelled by his parents to go for the gre class at heart he was an artist he just wanted to sing songs play music and be a rock star but you know parents they can sometimes propel you in a direction you don't want to go in they can compel you to go in a particular direction impel is a similar word to compel it also means to make something forcibly go in a certain direction right but compel has that without my willingness compel has that uh, nuance to it which impel usually may not have right six bachu words six child root words gone almost close to i can see about 30 odd words finished here 30 40 odd words finished here we are moving to the last phase of our uh, by roots today but the second half as usual complete nonsense complete stupidity complete levity light heartedness we'll do words by mnemonics but that's in the second half let's just finish off this part first sid here which means to sit again the sid means to sit in the very common root very useful root you add add to it you get a word called assiduous people struggle remembering the meaning of this word if they if they don't know the roots but with roots it's very easy ous means having the quality of sid means to sit as means okay not sitting on your ass but it actually means to sit towards something which actually means that you really sit on a topic you have the quality of sitting on a topic till the time it is completely closed assiduous actually means hard working this guy won't give up he'll put in a lot of effort he will sit and he will do the grind he has the quality of sitting and doing the grind till the work gets done so assiduous actually means hard working dissident the first part dis it means away apart negative right disharmony distance disagree all of them negative dis dissident is to sit away from you a dissident is somebody who doesn't agree with the party's view or with the majority's view okay the common word is called dissent which means i don't agree with you the governments are often accused of suppressing dissent which means they suppress the people who speak against the government they are suppressing dissent in a party Uh, recently in the congress party in rajasthan we had you know a very serious situation which rahul gandhi i hope did not treat with levity when a senior leader wanted to split away from the party because he was dissatisfied with the party he was a dissident he did not want to sit together with the other party people that's called dissident subside sub means under Now something that is subsiding is sitting under So you're sitting tall and then sitting under and and below and below. Something that subsides is going down. His fever has subsided after he took medicines. The initial excitement of cracking GRE and going to the US subsided when people were faced with their first racial incident. The subside means it goes down. Can be used negatively, can be used positively. It's a neutral word actually. now let us change it let us change sub which means below let us take a word which means above super super seed means to sit above so anything that supersedes another thing has taken precedence over this thing it will come before this thing it will become the superior thing or the more important thing his survival needs superseded his self fulfillment needs that guy needs bread not job satisfaction 
that's when something supersedes the current law supersedes whatever earlier laws existed so it supersedes understood dhoni's achievements supersede everything any indian captain might have achieved so far sunil gavaskar ji will not be happy to hear this but i'm just explaining a word right second last route or maybe third last route we have done how many we have done jung which gives you enjoin being forced by the law or being asked by the law to do something or not to do something similar word injunction being asked by the word asked by the court or an authority to do something or not do something juncture at a critical point in time or a critical point in a situation junction a meeting point of trains or roads or anything else levis which means light alleviate which alleviates a situation makes a situation better levity you should not have spoken with such levity in such a serious matter light heartedness not being serious levy the government imposed a new levy and it has made our pockets lighter levy we built a levy so that the flood waters get stopped here and do not come into the low lying farm area it's an embankment made of mud lever is an apparatus you can use to lift things as if they were very light leverage the influence that you have in a situation the power that you have in a situation levitation the physical act of floating in air of being so light that is levitation seed which means to go to when you seed something you yield something you give in something you you seed territory to a very powerful enemy accede you accede to somebody's request you give in to somebody's request because you have the power to accept or reject that request say seed the small country say seeded from the mainland over ethnic differences recede flood waters receded after heavy rains stopped concede i concede this point you are right i am wrong i concede the point i concede the argument we concede that we lost the elections it is to give in to agree intercede to act on behalf of somebody to go in between somebody between somebody who is a complainant and somebody who has a power to address that complaint i intercede on my brother's behalf in this matter precedent something that has gone before and is now used as a guideline for things that will come later that's a precedent you are setting a bad precedent for other kids by bunking classes antecedent something that has gone before something that has happened before anti before diluvium flood anti diluvian something which is very ancient very old deluge just a flood from the same root diluvium then three roots to which mean the same thing to beat bat plod and plunge applaud to beat your hands towards someone and praising them plaudits approval or praise from people he earned a lot of plaudits from the critics for his excellent acting in the movie laudatory his act of selflessness is laudatory worth praising implode explode both from plaudier explode boom implode something that collapses internally plausible believable you beat against his story and it still sounds true it's a plausible story implausible not believable at all plangier to beat plaintive very sorrowful very mournful very sad as if somebody is beating his or her chest and then singing that song that's a plaintive cry or a plaintive song don't make me sing it again please you will have a plaintive experience plaint is a formal complaint plaintive is somebody who is a formal complainant in a court of law that's a plaintive pel means to move to go appellation the name by which you go towards someone appellation is another word for a name propel is to move forward propel doesn't imply force propel Im- only implies moving in a certain direction propeller is a device that moves a ship forward repel move back they repelled the enemy advances compel my father compelled me to study biotechnology impel they were impelled by the impending urgency of the situation they were forced to move forward sid to sit assiduous he sits on something till he gets the job done very hard working assiduous dissident he sits away from us he is not happy sitting with us a dissident is somebody who is not one with the majoritarian view or one with the party leadership subside something that sits below a situation that is becoming less and less severe or less and less intense his excitement subsided once he met her in person and saw and saw what a rude person she was supersede everything i said what i am saying now 
supersedes every single thing I said before. It sits over and above everything else. So the words that we have done so far, moving on to the last few roots for today. Before we jump into the crazy part of the class of the class. Alter means other, you take add, you put them together, you get a word called adulterate, add alter eight, which means to add something else in it, something other than this. So we talk about food adulteration when something else has been added to what was the genuine item. That is adulterate. Alter gives us other words called altercation. An altercation is a severe argument. Not fisticuffs, not physical fight, but a very vocal, very aggressive argument between people is called an altercation. When you have a different point of view and you argue with the other, that's altercation. Alter ego. Ego means I. Right? Alter ego means other I. When you have a friend who is just like you, same tastes, same preferences, same desires from life, that person is your alter ego. He is your soul mate. He or she is your soul mate. He's just like me. If you wanted to go shopping and buy some clothes and you couldn't go because you are there in this class and you send that person, he will buy the exact same cloth, clothes that you would have loved to buy. He has the exact same reaction to a situation as you would have. Right? That kind of person, that kind of a soul mate is called an alter ego. The other I. Altruism. Ism is a suffix which means a philosophy or a religion or a school of thought. Altruism is a philosophy of the other person. So altruism is a philosophy that we should always think of the good of others before we think of our own good. Putting the interest of the other person before your own interest is called altruism. Lot of saints, sages, kind people, benevolent people show this altruistic nature. They think of the other person before they think of themselves. Right, that's a small journey with alter. Next one, property, which means one's own. You take add and you take property, you get appropriate, which means towards one's own. Actually, what appropriate means is the right manner of behavior, of acceptance, of dress, could be anything, but the right manner, which means you act as if you are in, you own this place or you're among people your own. So you act so that they will feel that you are doing it the right way. That is appropriate. Slightly stretched meaning I know, but that's how some words and roots go. They journey so much that they, their current meaning becomes very distant from the meaning of the roots they came from. But other words will clear, clearly recognize the relevance of property in that word. Propriety is again the right way of behaving, acting or dealing with the situation. Again. As if it's your own, your own property, one's own property, and therefore you're behaving the right manner. That is called propriety. Proprietor is a person who owns a company. It is his own company. The word property and proprietor are interlinked. They come from the same root. Another word called expropriate. Interesting word. Ex means away. Property is one's own. When the government takes over something that is owned by a citizen, it has expropriated his property or his assets. That is called expropriation. It's a legal taking away of your property because the government needs it, not because you don't own it. You are wondering where you have seen this? In a lot of Hindi movies, right? The policeman is chasing the criminal, the policeman's bike for whatever reason is not able to use his own. Then he sees another bike parked there of a guy who's urinating. Then before the guy could turn around or properly zip up, he takes his bike and then says, take away his bike. The government police officer has expropriated the, the citizen's bike in an inappropriate situation. Got it? So expropriate is when the government takes away your property because it needs it for a specific purpose or a certain amount of time. Not because you sold it to them or not because you are not the rightful owner. You are the rightful owner. The government acknowledges that yet takes away your property by force. That is expropriation. Grand, great. That's what this root means. You put AD towards it, you get a word called aggrandize. Now this has got multiple meanings. Some of them good, some of them not so good. Actually none of them are so, so good meanings. When a rich person is looking 
to aggrandize or for aggrandizement he is looking to increase his own wealth his own power his own influence the king could not look beyond his own family's aggrandizement which means he could not look beyond making his own family more wealthy more powerful more influential that is a word called aggrandize another meaning of aggrandize is to exaggerate to make something sound more important than it actually is for example you play cricket and you say oh it was a fast 160 miles per hour yorker and i just hit a six with my left hand but i'm a right hander you know but i hit a six with the left hand you are aggrandizing your achievements you are making them sound larger more important bigger than they actually are two meanings of aggrandize and none of them very positive or great meanings another word with grand grandiose which means something which is very pompous very show offy okay but that's a negative version of this the words meaning there is it sometimes used in a positive way also to mean something which is very grand very lavish very impressive that's also called grandiose but if you say stop being such a grandy you think that is stop being so much so pompous behave like a normal human being if somebody gave a grandiose speech his speech was filled with very pompous very big sounding words not a simple speech right grandeur is again impressiveness awesomeness royalness of something she was blown away by the grandeur of his home and decided to marry him right away love there for you right so that's grandeur and this brings us to the end no one last root probatus which means proof which is actually the root behind proof as well root behind probe which means to investigate same root probatus you take approbation it actually means approval You're saying yeah this is good this is right you can go ahead you've done well that is approbation public praise formal praise is called approbation which means that you have proved that you are worthy of all his respect approbation reprobate very negative meaning re means back or you know uh, again reprobate is somebody it has been proved that this guy cannot come back to rightful ways in christianity a reprobate is somebody who cannot be saved by god who is so sinful and keeps going back to his sins that that guy cannot be saved by god or by jesus that guy is called a reprobate similarly a reprobate criminal in everyday language we will say somebody is a reprobate criminal if he cannot be improved if he cannot be made a better person that guy is a reprobate criminal right last word with roots before we jump into madness for the rest of the session probation probation is a period you will serve upon joining a company where they say give him 6 months let him prove himself after that we'll tell him he's a permanent employee and we'll give him the benefits that we give permanent employees typically when you are a permanent employee companies companies have a notice period of 2 to 3 months so if they say get out they have to give you 2 months of salary but when you are probation they can say get out and you might have to leave tomorrow because you are still under the proving period that's when you are on probation understood got it brilliant good show that is 50 plus odd words right there done in less than an hour and i hope you guys remember the roots and the words a very effective way of memorizing this is to spend 10 minutes to 15 minutes every day going through parts of this entire session so you see these 10 child roots just to one child root every day and these words will imprint themselves on your memory without you needing to write them down memorize speak use flash cards etc etc just go through this logical sequence and they will stay with you now as i promised before i close this session move on to the next part of mnemonics the 10 prefixes we did simple prefixes but which give a variety of words from the same common root im not internal emphasis improper internal inherent or inflammable con means together or with we saw concede pre means before precedent se means away secede pro means in favor of propel this is negative in fact dispel is also a word same roots you dispel somebody's wrong notions you make somebody's wrong notions go away that is called to dispel sub means below sub quality subside 
super means above supersede and re we have seen in so many words recede right reprobate right so re which means again or back very common prefix prefixes please remember them this will make your memorizing words so easy it will come naturally to you in fact i have one student in this session i am not sure if he has come today or not uh, a guy by the name of rahil who is from bangalore he actually is able to figure out the meanings of new words by looking at the roots huh? like forget about memorizing roots or understanding words or memorizing words he figures out the meanings of words by guessing the roots he has become that good at using this method right i wish you guys all the best i hope you also use it very effectively and now we move on to the crazy crazy part of the session before we go there guys <clears throat> please give some likes to this video it really helps us promote this video through uh, youtube algorithms to a much wider section of people and they are also able to enjoy this uh, you know, such uh, vocabulary learning methods right please like it and i can tell you look uh, i've gone through almost every single vocab uh, video out there on youtube not a single one uses either of our two methods not a single one is this effective and so it will really help us if this video reaches out to as many students as it can and the as many students as possible benefit from these unique vocabulary building sessions so please like this video and spread the love and spread the word moving on ha <laughs> ha madness maybe not so mad today some of the images are serious today so ascetic first we look at three words and then we look at the word we we'll look at the pic to memorize this ascetic an ascetic is a person who practices self denial are yaar kuch nahi chahiye i am happy with what i have don't give me luxuries i want to live a very simple very basic life i don't want to eat tasty food i don't want to lie on a comfortable bed i don't want the company of friends i will reach purity through this self denial of all pleasures that guy is called ascetic ऐसे टेक के बैठूं तो बस बहुत है यार लाइफ में ऐसे टेक आई डोंट वॉन्ट एनी अदर प्लेजर्स ऑस्टियर समथिंग विच इज कम्प्लीटली डिवॉइड ऑफ एनी एडॉर्नमेंट वेरी सिंपल वेरी स्टर्न वे ऑफ लिविंग ऐसे टिक्स आर यूजली ऑस्टियर बट नॉट ऑलवेज एन ऑस्टियर पर्सन माइट बी एन एसेटिक बट अगेन नॉट ऑलवेज एन ऑस्टियर पर्सन कैन ऑल्सो बी ए स्ट्रिक्ट डिसिप्लिनेरियन हु बिलीव इन लिविंग ए वेरी अन एडॉर्ड सिंपल लाइफ but is he may not give up the pleasure of friends etc as an ascetic does bedizen is to dress in a very vulgar showy manner i'll give you the images to memorize these things now serious guy living on the streets simple guy not even cutting his hair doesn't care for anything no possessions in the world just sitting and reading his book as a take ke baithu enough in my life ascetic I said, take care, bato. Enough in my life. Austere. Some people say the Australians are stern, simple people who live in an adorned life. Austere, Aussie, tere, ऐसे austere होते हैं. Just a beer, dude. Just give me a beer. Life is simple. I don't want anything else. And I'm a stern guy. Huh? Only one big glass of beer. Aussie, tere, ऐसे austere. And our friend from Bollywood. भाई डजन कपड़े लिया हूं ऐसे ऑल वर्गर एंड फ्लैशी भाई डजन बेडिजन वेरी वर्गर शोई फ्लैशी क्लोथ्स आवर ओन फ्रेंड रणवीर कपूर भाई डजन क्लोथ ऐसे कैन यू इमेजिन जस्ट टू रिमेंबर दिस थ्री वर्ड्स ऐसे टिक के बैठा हूं ऐसे टिक बैठा हूं बस और क्या चाहिए बड़े ऑस्टियर है ऑसी तेरे जस्ट ड्रिंक बियर एंड कुछ नहीं चाहिए लाइफ में वेरी सिंपल फिलोसफी ऑस्टियर फिलोसफी ऑसी तेरे फिलोसफी भाई डजन कपड़े लाया हूं ऐसे वर्गर और फ्लैशी वाले be dressed in clothes to dress in a vulgar showy manner right next set of three blandishment it means flattery so when you try blandishments with someone you are trying to flatter someone and get them to do what you want them to do broach when you broach a topic you are bringing up a topic for the first time let's say you got a very weird kind of a tattoo and you have to tell your father but you are very scared to tell him how do you broach the topic with him burnish is to polish and make something shine right now let us look at the stupid words stupid image just to remember this this you know video is doing a lot of rounds these is bandish bandits or bandish bandits rather sorry 
and if somebody comes up to this guy who has acted so poorly in this and you tell him bhai what acting you are a rising superstar you are the next hero next salman khan of the industry so they are trying blandishment on the excuse of watching bandish bandish bandits broach now remember the tattoo story i told you you got a weird tattoo but you are scared to show your father how do you broach the topic just imagine if the tattoo you got is that of a roach अब रोच का टॉपिक कैसे ब्रोच करोगे पापा के साथ हाउ टू अप्रोच योर फादर विद दिस टॉपिक हाउ टू हाउ टू ब्रोच द टॉपिक ऑफ द रोच का टाइटल विद योर फादर इन योर पॉलिशिंग इज शूज यूर ट्राइंग टू बर्निश इज शूज इन योर थॉट यू बर्निश इज सो हार्ड इट कैच इज फायर एंड बर्न द शू इंस्टेड ऑफ बर्निश द शू वॉट ए ट्रेजडी अब तो रोच का टाइटू पापा रोज उतारेंगे बंदिश बैंडिट्स में क्या खूब काम किया भाई आपने नेक्स्ट सुपरस्टार ब्लैंडिशमेंट इन द नेम ऑफ बंदिश बैंडिट्स अब रोच का टॉपिक हाउ वुड यू ब्रोच विथ योर पापा एस्पेशली वेन यू हैव बर्न शू इन द से नेम ऑफ बर्निशिंग हिज शू द नेम ऑफ पॉलिशिंग यू बर्न द शू नेक्स्ट सेट ऑफ वर्ड्स कैनार्ड सन विच इज फॉल्स डिलिबरेटली मिसलीडिंग स्टोरी बेकार की लंबी लंबी फेंकना फॉल्स स्टोरीज दट्स ए कैनार्ड कैन ट्राइट when you can't do something right and you feel so sorry so you're feeling very sorry for the wrong you have done and you're seeking forgiveness sorry dear i can't do it right i am contrite is contrite caucus a smaller group within a larger organization that's called a caucus so it is often used in the american system of governance where they have congressional caucuses which are smaller bodies within the larger congress of elected members who are trying to address a specific issue That's called a caucus. Now let's see the stupid words. Remember this. A Canada man, na, boy, apna bahut chalta hai. One Sardar Singh to another. Yar, ye phir Canada ke Canada suna raha hai. Phir Canada ki false misleading story suna raha hai. Contrite. I couldn't pick a better pick than this, ha? Huh, for contrite. Look at the poor puppy. It can't pee right. It will go and pee anywhere it gets the urge to pee. and poor guy looking at you looking feeling so sorry can't do right so i'm feeling contrite poor puppy and caucus imagine if you are trying to enter a separate hall in the us congress or separate room and this guy is standing outside like a bouncer sir aap caucus mein ho kagaz mein to aapka naam nahi hai caucus mein kagaz ka naam caucus ke naam people who are part of this smaller group in the organization you are not there please get out that is caucus जस्ट मैं रिमेमराइज हम इगेन कैनाडा के बारे में कैनाड सुनाता है फॉल्स सॉरी अबाउट कैनाडा पुअर टॉमी कान डू राइट सो कॉन्ट्राइट सॉरी सर कागज में कॉकस के नाम है आपका नाम नॉट देयर सो यू कॉन्ट एंटर यू आर नॉट पार्ट ऑफ द स्मॉलर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और दिस पार्ट ऑफ द स्मॉलर ग्रुप विद इन द लार्जर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन प्लीज गेट आउट कॉकस नेक्स्ट सेट ऑफ वर्ड्स कॉकेट वेल इज अ वुमेन हु फ्लट्स एंड हु फ्लट्स ऑफ्टन The word is coquette. Desuetude. Desuetude is when something has stopped being used by people, when it has fallen into a condition of disuse. Dogmatic. Somebody is dogmatic when their opinions or what they say is not based on facts, but based on their own opinions, and they say it very assertively, very arrogantly. They are very, and they won't even listen to your point of view. Such guys are called dogmatic people. Understood? Now the stupid ways of remembering this. Imagine this hen flirting with the cock. Cock tea pee ne chaloge. A flirty hen saying cock tea pee ne chaloge. She is flirting with the cock. Desuetude. I don't know how many of you guys remember this desi dude. He used to be on Channel V called his name was Udham Singh. Very popular VJ. Very desi kar raha hai. Haryana V me he would host the entire show. And now nobody asks about him. Nobody probably even asks about Channel V these days. so both this desi dude and channel v have gone into a state of desuetude desi dude in desuetude no use state of disuse these days dogmatic dogma theek hi kehti hai thoda arrogantly kehti hai doesn't listen to you but dogmatic hi bolti hai theek hi bolti hai flirty murghi saying cock tp ne chaloge channel v ke desi dude no use now state of disuse desuetude desi dude in desuetude डॉगमा ठीक बोलती है बट वेरी एरोगेंटली बोलती है वेरी ओपिनियनेटेड 
next set of stupidity data rent which means when you you know something that discourages you from doing something or taking an action for example in today's world we use the phrase nuclear deterrent a lot the theory is if two countries have nuclear weapons they will never go to war with each other because they are afraid that the other guy will also use nuclear weapons that's called nuclear deterrence flout is when you treat something scornfully it is typically or most commonly used in the context of breaking rules or breaking laws as if you don't care for those laws not because you are unaware of those laws but you are like these laws are not meant for me okay you know my father's name ha huh? i am from delhi this is how we do stuff okay so when you flout rules like that you are treating the rules you are breaking the rules brazenly as if you don't you are treating the rules with you no know, contempt and scorn forbearance actually means patience he showed a lot of forbearance with his irrational wife he showed a lot of patience with his irrational wife the stupidity to remember all this nuclear weapon for rent they they ta rent they they rent and take a nuclear weapon pakistan's philosophy of economy they they rent take a nuclear weapon nuclear deterrent nuclear they they rent the next flout flout wala hi rule flout karta hai lord krishna only broke all the rules and you know yashoda maya used to scold him for treating the rules with such scorn flout wala flouts the rules and forbearance patience forbears sitting patiently when will you get our order of honey do piazza hmm four bears sitting patiently four bears patience that's a lot of patience right the stupid way to remember this they they rent for the missile nuclear deterrent flout wala he rules flout karta hai he treats the rules with contempt he breaks the rules with contempt and four bears waiting patiently four bears right last set of words for today you have done 20 words by mnemonics and 52 by roots and with this we come to the end of our session let's see if i hope these roots these mnemonics also you find funny you find them interesting and most importantly find that they stick in your mind and help you remember the word founder when something sinks when something fails or collapses we say it has foundered a company founders when it has failed the ship founders when it sinks right next one fracas a fracas is a very loud quarrel it's a brawl it's not a fight it's a ghatiya cheap steaks road fight when you get into a bar and you get in you know, that kind of a brawl is called a fracas it's not fighting like this it's like ah 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 that's a fracas frugal somebody who is very you know who doesn't waste anything very particular he will use money food anything he will be very frugal about it he will not waste anything amazon's one of one of the corporate philosophies or corporate values of amazon is frugality that they will not waste anything glib somebody is a very smooth talker but he is lying he is being insincere sir aap se na seekhne ko bahut milta hai bloody glib fellow he is lying behind your back he is being a very smooth liar in front of your face dear i can never be angry at you i just love you so much you know when i'm angry with you i hurt myself more than i hurt you bloody glib husband galib bante ho sher suna ke jhoot jhoot bolte ho what is stupid to remember all these four words see this guy <clears throat> supposedly a fantastic guy but a fantastic guy gone wrong in a fantastic way adam newman the founder of the company we work and the <laughs> the guy who eroded softbank's wealth and reputation so this guy is going for a swim if somebody asks where is the founder doob gaya sink founder foundered when he went for a swim company bhi doob gaya fracas i don't know if you guys know this actor is sonam kapoor's father you might know sonam kapoor he is from your generation this guy is my father's generation anil kapoor and he used to have a you know he used to have a uh, catch word which he would repeat often in movies jackass so imagine 
अनिल कपूर वेंट टू ए बार एंड गॉट इन ए झकास प्रकाश इतना मारा मेरे को इतना मारा झकास मारा आई वॉज इन ए प्रकाश दट इज प्रकाश फ्रूगल सी दिस गर्ल ईटिंग द फ्रूट शी इज ए फ्रू गर्ल गर्ल शी इज गोइंग टू नीट नॉट ओनली द फ्रूट बट ऑल्सो द सीड्स शी विल नॉट लीव एनी थिंग शी विल नॉट वेस्ट एनी थिंग शी इज ए फ्रू गर्ल गर्ल शी विल ईट द फ्रूट विद ऑल द सीड्स फ्रूट गर्ल फ्रू गर्ल लास्ट वन I don't know if you guys can see this. I'll read this out for you. This is Mirza Ghalib, his photograph, and one of his lovely, lovely couplets. Unke dekhe se jo aajati hai muh par ronak. Unke dekhe se jo aajati hai muh par ronak. Wo samajte hain ki bimar ka hal acha hai. Beautiful. But a guy who, a husband who says this to his wife. इज बींग ए ग्लिब लायर उनके देखे से तो इसकी तबीयत और उतर जाती है सुधर नहीं जाती है अ ग्लिब लायर लाइक ए गालिब इज समी हुज अ वेरी स्मूथ वेरी फ्लूंट लायर डजेंट इवन ब्लिंक एन आई वेन ई लाइस दट्स ग्लिब जस्ट मेमोराइज ऑल दिस फॉर वे दिट द फाउंडर गो ही फाउंडर ही सैंक क्या झकास फ्रकास था भाई बहुत मारा मेरे को झकास फ्रकास ए लाउड क्वारल ए ब्रॉल That fruit girl will eat even the seeds. She will not waste anything. She is frugal. Galib ki tarah glib, jhooti tarif karte ho aap. But very smooth. I enjoy listening to that. That is glib. With this, we come to the end of today's session, guys. Thank you so much for the company. Thank you so much for the love. I hope these methods really work for you because these are the best and most powerful methods in the world for improving your vocab in a very short period of time. Before we leave, once again, what we do at Aptitude. we are one of the leading coaching institutes and mentoring institutes for law and for business exams like ipm rohtak and ipm indoor we do such live sessions very frequently we do a lot of online coaching these days both short focused booster kind of sessions as well as long term programs and we have another best test series uh, currently in the industry for both these kinds of exams and thank you so much those of you who are new to this channel please subscribe and if you would like to get the entire series of 800 words we are going to do 10 sessions in all 10 to 12 sessions we are already half way through the journey there is a fifth session today thanks to all these guys who have been supporting me and supporting you know who have enjoyed watching these videos uh, in the last one month that we have been creating this for you please register please subscribe to the channel if you are new and if you enjoyed these sessions please show us your love and like the video thank you so much see you guys next sunday same time